everyone, and welcome to today's Midweek Moment. I am Pastor Annette Jones, the Senior Pastor of South Suburban Missionary Baptist Church, and we are located in Harvey, Illinois. Look, this month, we are talking about the college experience, the college edition, every Wednesday, so that we can share and bring information to parents, to grandparents, to the community, as well as to our students, talking about how to navigate from high school into the college life. I wish somebody had given me some tidbits and information while I was still in high school and before I went off to college. It was just as hard then as it is today to navigate these muddy waters between high school and the college life. We know that education can unlock the doors to so many opportunities. And our young people are missing out on this choice to use the keys to unlock their future. Today's conversation definitely can help our young people and those planning to attend college to begin to make good choices and help instill pride in valuing information and valuing education that's going to help them to succeed in life and open up so many possibilities. So for this platform and for today's midweek moment, I want to welcome Professor Quincy James Reinhardt. Hi, Professor Hello. Reinhardt. Thank you so much for joining us. Professor Reinhardt is a professor at or adjunct professor at Morehouse College in the Africa Afrofrocana uh, studies. And uh, not only that, but he is the associate campus minister at Morehouse. And so definitely we know that he has a lot to share with us today about the college experience and things to help us along the way. So Quincy, we're ready to get right in into our um, questions and talking about college life. We know that students need to trust someone because they don't always know who to trust when they get ready to go off into college and navigating from high school, et cetera. And so who, who, who can they uh, rely on or what resources can they rely on in order to help them to navigate in their career choices and college experience? Well, thank you for that question. I would first say start with your religious community. Um, many within the community have gone to college, have experienced college. And if you are in high school, I would say, you know, talk to your career counselor that will help to assist uh, in terms of um, what colleges to attend. Um, and if you're in college, uh, if you're attending college, uh, talk to your associate campus minister or <clears throat> your chaplain uh, and other professors, you know, utilize your professors who have all gone to school and um, talk uh, with them about your, your experience and your journey. Oh, wonderful. So uh, they can talk to teachers, they can talk to uh, counselors, they can talk. I, I really like that they can seek out their religious leaders, their, uh, their church family. There are some within every church that I know of that have people who have went away to college and have that college information that they can share. So talking to somebody in their church community and uh, their associate campus minister or uh, somebody who works in that area and even an advisor. So what great resources that the students can have so that they can uh, start to understand about this college experience. We, we know that the cost of education is so expensive. How can students um, and parents afford to pay for these costs and what can they do to help finance them? So again, um, the church, many um, churches I know have um, scholarship opportunities, maybe $2,000, $3,000. Certainly it's not a lot, but it will help with books and help with you know transportation to get to the school. 
Uh, but then also reaching out to the different scholarship uh, fund or taking advantage of the different scholarship opportunities, such as United Negro College Fund, the Bill and Melinda Gates um, Foundation, um, the Mellon Fellows, you know, there are, you know, monies available. Uh, and also, you know, making sure that you meet the requirement or the deadline for scholarship opportunities in the institution in which you are applying. Oh, wonderful. So definitely scholarships, applying for scholarships, making sure that you have access to those. And sometimes you can get that information right at your high schools. They may have a list of those. Your, your counselors may have information about scholarships that are available, uh, taking advantage of uh, scholarships that come up in your church or your parents may be involved in other organizations that also are giving away uh, money to, for uh, students. And it doesn't matter how much it is, as you said, I like what you said, that uh, any amount that's given in a scholarship can go towards books and other fees that you might have to pay. Uh, one thing that, that we hadn't touched upon that I think we can add is the FAFSA form, which is the free uh, application for federal student aid, definitely applying for that. And, and I think it opened up October 1st. So we can also uh, uh, apply for that program so that there may be some additional funds that are available. And don't forget about loans if, if necessary. So with those things in mind, and we have students who are ready uh, to get uh, to 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 uh, understand how to how to how to navigate in these muddy waters of high school and college while they're yet in high school. What are some things that they should be doing? Do your homework. <laughs> oh, yes. uh, be sure to do your homework. Turn in your work on time. Make sure that the work you do is excellent. Yeah. Um, so that those scholarship opportunities will um, uh, will be afforded to you. You know, most of the scholarship opportunities require a 3.0 or a 3.5. So you want to make sure that you get good grades and that if you are struggling in high school, that you seek the necessary assistance, uh, uh, tutoring, you know, so that those challenges will not... Um, hinder you from moving forward. Oh, definitely. So I, I like that. Do your homework <laughs> and, and parents can help, right? Help their students to do the homework, uh, making sure that they are doing all of the assignments and parents go to the, the parent teacher conferences and talk about your students progress so that you know what's happening and you can make those adjustments now even starting early in their high school years to make those necessary adjustments so that they do good, get good grades. So thank you so much for that. As, as students are getting ready and preparing to transition from high school into college, how do they choose the right school? So again, you know, uh, whatever your religious community may be, uh, reaching out to those within the congregation. But also, um, I do know when I was coming up, there used to be an HBCU tour, uh, of course, COVID. And so that is no, maybe, you know, um, not necessarily an option, but you may be able to do virtual tours of the institutions um, and, you know, figuring out what best suits you, uh, what best suits your learning um, styles. Uh, reading the curricula so that you will know if you will be a good fit for that institution. Uh, certainly consider an HBCU, a historically black college and university uh, as a part of your option. Um, there are some amazing schools, shout out to Wilberforce University, Morehouse Scholars, Spelman, Hampton, Howard University. Um, the learning on those institutions um, is amazing. So, yeah, <laughs> take advantage of um, college tours and um, having conversations with people who have attended college. Absolutely. And don't forget University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign where I went. Hello. 
<laughs> so there are so many, so many colleges to choose from, whether it's an HBCU, his, historically black college and university, whether it's a predominantly white school or a diverse school, whatever the case may be, there are so many institutions. And so the only way you're going to know is by touring, by doing virtual tours. A lot of colleges have set up those virtual tours and students can go and look. Uh, going to your career counseling center at your school to kind of seeing uh, uh, what kind of schools are out there and what's their population, what's their class sizes. All of those things may matter. Like you said, uh, Quincy, uh, knowing your learning style, maybe you you like it better uh, uh, for a, you to be in a small uh, group or classroom versus being in a very large one. Uh, and so forth. And so location even might be a factor in determining where you might go. So whether it's local, whether it's schools that's within the same city that you live in or schools outside of that, uh, those can be your choices. But definitely using all the resources necessary to ensure that you are picking a good school. What what if they don't pick the right school? What What, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, certainly you can transfer. Um, but before I say a word about that, to the parents, perhaps like me, I was a first generation college graduate. Uh, my mother did not necessarily know what questions to ask. Um, and so for parents or grandparents who are listening again, seek those whom you know who have gone to college and ask them to help you, you know, to ask the questions that are needed. Um, yeah, because that's important. And what was the other question? Was about if it's not a right fit for you. So, so you can okay. transfer. Oh, okay. You can't, you can transfer. I started out, um, at a predominantly white institution and it was not a good fit for me. <laughs> um, the Dean of Students, uh, Dr. Kim Perez, uh, approached me and said, have you considered Wilberforce University? And at the moment, I was at the time, I was like, what? And did my research, and it is the first uh, HBCU owned and operated by Blacks in 1856. And so I started looking into Wilberforce, and I transferred. And I finished at Wilberforce, graduated from Wilberforce University. And so, you know, the option, there are options. Now you want to, you know, choose the right institution if you can help it in the beginning so that you won't have to do a lot of transferring because there are also institutions that, you know, doesn't accept certain credits. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you're not uh, lagging behind and that you're able to graduate in a timely fashion, even upon transferring. Thank you so much. So even if it's not the right fit initially, don't, don't, don't get alarmed. You can always decide to go to another school, finding another school that is a good fit. And uh, the key here is remembering what your focus is, and that's to graduate and to get your degree that you've earned. Um, so, so definitely we thank you for sharing that. Uh, with the school out of the way, now we've chosen the school that we want to go to. How do we determine what major to choose? Read the curriculum. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. Read the curriculum. Um, it, it outlines different programs, um, and perhaps, you know, you may decide I want to start out with education or I want to start out with English and you decide down the line, oh, this is not for me. I want to switch to psychology or want to do math, you know, uh, but read the handbook and the handbook will tell you how many course credits you need, how many electives you need so that if you decide your sophomore year to, to transition to something different, then you may have to pick up some other classes that will delay your graduation. And so, you know, it's okay to kind of go in undecided your freshman year, but by the end of your freshman year, you should certainly know, um, have a better idea of what major you want to pursue. So even if a student uh, 
does not know right now in high school what degree or what what major they want to go into. Uh, they can put on their application still. Uh, I don't know, haven't chosen. Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so they yep. share that with the colleges, and then the colleges place them into one of the many sub colleges that that they have within that university or college, and until they make a decision. Correct. Uh, yes, and I also think you know part of choosing a major is really about knowing yourself knowing yeah. your your talents your gifts what you bring to the table yeah and not backing down on, off of that okay so um definitely uh making sure that you understand a little bit about yourself and you can find some of that information out right in, at high schools they have some assessment tests sometimes they can mm -hmm. you, you can talk to teachers and they can help you to understand sometimes it's based on your favorite school subject Right. What you really, really liked, whether you liked art over other subjects, whether you like math over other subjects or science over other subjects. And uh, sometimes that can be the way in which you make a choice or decision about what uh, career or what 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 major you want to choose. So definitely go for it. And if you're undecided, as Quincy just shared, uh, don't don't be alarmed. You have time to still choose, but choose it within that first year. So definitely great, great information. So Quincy, look, it's been such a pleasure having you on with us and talking with us about this college experience and how to, how to navigate these waters and to transition from high school into college. Do you have any final words that you want to leave for the students, the parents, grandparents, or those in their community who's going to help them in this process. Yeah. Do not be afraid to leave home. Well, I know I that many, you know, students in high school are thinking, Oh, how am I going to get there? How am I going to afford? You don't worry about that. You let that, <laughs> let your parents or guardians or mentors worry about that, but yeah. do not limit yourself to the places uh, and the people that you you can meet, uh, but also something that my childhood pastor said to me, and that was study hard, think deeply, and never settle for shallow intellectual investigation. And so I say to you, study hard, <laughs> yeah. expand your knowledge, get as much knowledge as you can about everything that you can <laughs> and take that with you wherever you go. Oh, wonderful, wonderful parting words. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Quincy Reinhardt. Thank you for being part of this conversation on today. Thank you for, for having those me. that are listening. We thank you for joining us for this midweek edition, talking about college and the college experience and trying to help our high schoolers and those that are coming from grammar school into high school to understand things that they need to do and can do in order to get to the college level. And so if you are listening and watching and you want to make a contribution to South Suburban Missionary Baptist Church, you can do so by going to PayPal and entering paypal.me slash SSMBC to make a contribution so we can continue to bring this kind of information to you. So again, Quincy, thank you so much for joining us. We have appreciated your time. Thank you for sharing. Thank you.